G'day everyone, Dark to you. So, after my last trip to Fraser, I noticed that the Rodeo was getting a little bit wobbly. It's got a couple of the ball joints and the tie rod ends are uh, looking a bit flogged out, so time to replace them. Got a big stack of bits here. It's like Christmas morning. Yeah, shiny. So you're gonna go ahead and stick those in there and let's get cracking, eh? There's a right way and a wrong way to do this, and the right way involves getting the right tools and spending a bunch of money, and I have neither the right tools nor the inclination to, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this full caveman method, i.e. the cheap way and the difficult way. So to start out, I'm going to get this whole tie rod off. She'll get that out of my way and I'll let me spin this knuckle freely. We'll go ahead and pull the bolts out of the upper and lower ball joints. So to start, I'm going to crack these nuts and then we'll sink some heat into these thingies here just to try and break the grip on the taper. Let that sink in. Let's get in and have a go, shall we? Time for fire. And of course the trick is to try and not set fire to any of your good boots. Now of course to make this easy what you do is you get yourself a proper ball joint separator like a press or one of those forky things. But if you don't feel like spending even more money, just take your favourite whacking stick and start belting on these tapers. Easy. A little downwards pressure while you're whacking away and pops right free. On to the next one. Oh, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. And before I forget, I'm going to put some witness marks on these threads so I know exactly how to line them back up. Obviously I'll have to go and get a wheel alignment done straight away after doing all this, but at least this way you get them pretty close so your tyres aren't all out like that or weird directions, so witness marks, they help. So now I'm just going to repeat the process, heat these two 
tapers and belt them free. I've just got the jack down underneath the control arm here just to take the weight of the suspension. Let's get to it. Three down, one to go. That one took a little longer than the others, but I managed to pop that taper off just by getting the jack under this control arm, lifting it up just a little bit to take the weight, and just tapping on the bottom, and it just popped off. So, next step will be to, I have to pull the front of this hub off so I can release this drive shaft because as you can see it's in the way of these bolts here and also with that in there I can't get a torque wrench in there to do that up. So we'll pull that off and get to replacing all these bits. You can see I've got witness marks on there just to make sure it goes back on the way it came off. What we're going to do now is we're going to pop that top ball joint free, which will give us some freedom to wiggle this about and get the other one done. I've tied this little strap onto here up to some wire that I've wrapped through a couple of holes in the guard just to stop this from flopping about too much, and hopefully that'll that'll do something. The thing I've found getting these bolts out is just gently work the suspension up and down until you find the point where they want to come out. That way you keep the threads all nice and straight and you don't have to worry about going and getting new bolts. Aha! So I just like to go ahead and make sure that these threads are all still straight and that the nuts go on easy. So these four are all good. These ones are a little bit tight, but they should come good once I've hit them on the wire wheel, which we'll do now. There we go, those all go together nice and easy onto the tie rod ends. Ooh, blue bag, fancy. You pay special attention when you're pulling these apart because one of them's right hand thread and one of them's left hand thread. See, righty Lucy. One down. I forgot to turn my camera back on, but this is on there real tight, so I had to put in the vice there to actually get enough purchase on it to wind it off. This is why I'm fond of my copper coat. It stops things like that from happening. So here's a hot tip for you. Don't just rely on your witness mark. Make sure you also take photos and count your threads. 
which fortunately I did. Because this dude was stuck on there well proper good. So I had to really get in there with the wire brush and the heat and the, the inox to free it up and in the process I lost all my paint. But I know how many threads I have to go on, so it's quite a simple matter of putting it back together again. Done. All right, let's go put the car back together then. Now, first things first, I want to drop this lower ball joint in, just to get it all lined up. Beautiful. I like to just jam a rag through these tapers and clean them out. All that bottom one all loose so I can actually get in here. There we go. Ah, oh, there we go. A bit fiddly, but you know, it gets the job done. Time. This big nut down here, 94 foot pounds. These four bolts in here holding the joint in, 75 foot pounds, or 76 rather. This one up here for the upper ball joint, that's 72 foot pounds. And then these four up here, 24 foot pounds of torque. There we go. Another bit of good practice is to get a paint pen, put some witness marks on your bolt, nut and whatever, so that way you can easily tell at a glance if they're starting to work themselves out. Which is very important if you're going off-roading and driving on awful corrugations and stuff. Bolts do like to go walk about sometimes. All right, last piece of the puzzle, the tie rod ends. And indeed, the tie rod itself. Stretch him out. Oi, get back in there.
Well, there we go, all done. So that was relatively straightforward. It only took me two days. The, um, doing the second side there was a lot faster than doing the first one, which I practiced on yesterday. But yeah, it's just some basic tools and a bit of perseverance. Not that hard of a job. That's the wallet more than anything else. But uh, I think it's time to go for a quick test drive before we send it off to have its wheels aligned. Let's go. Can I get a medium Broncos burger meal? Yeah. And can I get a uh, chocolate shake to drink, thanks? Chocolate shake to drink, yeah. Yep. What's here? Uh, that's all, thank you. through test. Much nicer to drive now that I've finally replaced those old ball joints. Especially those lower ones, I've been meaning to get them for ugh, far too long, years even. The upper ball joints were still holding in there, the boots were completely rooted so they weren't far off going bad. The tie rods on the passenger side, they were alright. But both ones on the driver's side, they were pretty rooted. Sweet. 